हेलो गाइस वन सेकेंड वेलकम टू द फॉरेंसिक लेक्चर सीरीज आई एम डॉक्टर भूपेश कुमार शर्मा एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर फॉरेंसिक साइंस एंड आई एम योर फॉरेंसिक ऑनलाइन ट्यूटर लास्ट टाइम वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ क्राइम सीन एंड द इन्वेस्टिगेशन नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ द क्राइम सीन एज यू नो द प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ द क्राइम सीन इज अ वेरी क्रूशियल मैटर बिकॉज द the delicacy of the evidence integrity of the evidence depends upon how you protect the crime scene so there are different methods of protecting uh, protecting the crime scene but first we need to understand that what are the dangers to whom or from which we have to protect the crime scene so let's go for the protection of the crime scene as we were discussing about that the crime scene protection is a very crucial thing which need to be taken care uh, by the investigating officer as the success or the failure of the crime scene depends upon its protection as you know there are many dangers on the crime scene uh, and we need to protect the crime scene for the integrity of the evidences so that the evidence remain as such or they should not be destroyed and if there is a destruction so there should be a minimum destruction to the evidences so we are going to discuss about uh, first of all that what are the types of the dangers uh, to the crime scene so these dangers can be firstly uh, from the human beings there can be various onlookers various viewers there can be certain suspect or there can be criminal also criminal activity that can happen and he may come to the crime scene or he may stage crime scene he may take away certain evidences or he may manipulate the crime scene so the first danger is from the human beings the second danger is from the animals of course if it is an open area or like desert so you may have um, uh, the animals like camel cats and all these and even uh, the pet animals can also be the danger to destroy the the crime scene and then the third category is the natural calamities like the rain or uh, there can be wind there can be uh, the tornadoes something like that but those are the rare things which we have no control over the natural calamities so it is very much important it is very much necessary to to properly protect the crime scene for the successful evidence collection and the preservation uh, of the evidences so these are the dangers which we need to take care always in our mind now what are the the parameters of the protection of the crime scene so what first is the yellow crime scene barrier tape which is mostly used very commonly used you must have seen it and in various crime series uh, also then there is a red crime barrier tape which you have not seen it so commonly but i will be going to discuss about the significance of this red crime scene barrier tape then the evidence markers are there you must have seen all these evidence marker like one two three as you can see it here all these are the evidence marker and then there are different weapon recovery kits are also there which are used in the protection of the crime scene and so barrier tapes so first comes the yellow barrier tape so if you will see that the yellow barrier tape is used to create the outer periphery of the crime scene and then there is a red barrier tape which is used to create the inner periphery of the crime scene so let's say there are there is a very large area and over that large area you need to put the yellow barrier tape and there is a small area within the yellow barrier tape area which are having more crucial evidences and where you do not want you means the investigating officer or the forensic expert they do not want anybody to enter into that area because most of the important evidences are lying here so the outer periphery is will be of the yellow barrier tape and the inner periphery will be of the red barrier tape then comes the the crime scene evidence marker and the evidence marker we need to index the evidences we need to put the numbering of the evidences from 1 2 3 4 like this so we need to start the the marking of the evidences from major to the minor let's say there is a dead body and let's say there is a firearm there is a blood so dead body will become our first evidence and blood pool will become our second evidence and the firearm will become our third evidence so like this we have to put the marking on the evidences but almost it is uh, not always possible uh, to put such markings so because then the random marking have to be chosen as as soon as the evidences are encountered step by step so we need to keep this in mind now let's say there are different number of uh, blood pools there are various blood pools so how you are going to mark let's say i have given uh, the blood pool a marking 1 and uh, now there are four blood pools so i should give them 1a 1b 1c 1d like this 
and the evidence markers are also used to reduce the likelihood that evidence will be lost stolen or damaged because once you have indexed down all the evidences in the sketches as well so if any evidence is missing that can be checked that which evidence is missing, uh, is missing and what are the different things that can be taken care of so the next is how to secure the crime scene see before going ahead to any of the thing i would like to say if you see a sign of uh, the survivor if the victim is fighting for the life or there is such sign of survival you see the victim is still alive so the medical protection the medical assistance has to be provided first this is the first most work of the investigating officer or even the forensic expert to provide the medical assistance to the victim it may not always be victim it may be suspect also it may be criminal as well but the first thing is to provide the medical assistance to the person who is in need and then you are going to protect the crime scene to preserve its physical aspect the second thing is you have to prevent the uh, entry of all unauthorized people from the crime scene in the crime scene and who are these all unauthorized people so the the media people the onlookers the viewers the nearby people these are all unauthorized people so we need to uh, avoid the entrance of these people on the crime scene so that's why we need to secure the crime scene with the barrication tape and nobody will be allowed uh, in that barrication uh, tape and as i told you uh, yellow and red barrication tape uh, through the yellow barrication tape certain people can be allowed but through the red barrication tape only the forensic expert and those who are dealing with those major evidences should be allowed and then you need also to prevent the unneeded movement of any of the physical evidence because we all are human beings we may misplace certain evidences here and there so we need to uh, avoid uh, walking through unnecessary walking through on the crime scene to avoid all such things the next thing we need to take care most uh, care has to be taken at the entrance and exit as we have discussed in the last series that the, at the point of the entrance you are going to encounter many of the evidences at, as well as at the point of exits so these areas should be protected first and then you need to also postcard uh, the crime scene I, either a personal guard a home guard a security guard should be there always on the crime scene if you are leaving the crime scene because of the time constraint or because of the unavailability of the evidence recovery kit all these things so you need to have a security guard to to see or to watch to observe the any activity on the crime scene then if it is a road accident so you need to reroute the traffic in such cases because you cannot hold the crime scene protected or locked for a long time in such cases where the road accidents are encountered and then comes about the fragile evidences what are fragile evidences uh, the trace evidences or the evidences that can be vanished off very easily as like the footprints are there if it is a desert area and you have the sunken foot wear impression so that can be easily uh, wiped off through the wind or through the animal activities so you need to protect them first with the certain type of containers so you need to put over the containers in those area and that should be uh, protected first next comes as we have discussed that give the aid to the injured person and examine the dead if the person is already died then you need to do the examination though we are not authorized to do so but if we have the medical assistance providers there the ambulance providers there they will check that whether the person is dead or not we should not make any attempt in such cases to touch the dead bodies until and otherwise it is very much needed otherwise there will be a chance of contamination of the dna <coughs> sorry there will be chances of the contamination of the dna uh, or such things then uh, we need to prevent the unneeded walking otherwise we may misplace certain evidences we need to avoid touching any door door knobs light switches close all the doors as these areas will be having certain trace evidences like fingerprints dust dirt footwear impressions or also uh, i remember a case where an investigator went to um, investigate the crime scene and he switched on the light and it was a uh, uh, the crime scene 
it was a crime scene where a gas stove has been uh, left open so when the spark was there because of the light switch so the explosion was there so we need to avoid such things so we need to use our own artificial light sources led lights or other things uh, to see first what is the crime what type of crime we are investigating and then only we need to touch those areas whenever it is very much required we need to use avoid all the telephone or smoking at the scene because there as i told you in the last slide in the last lecture the evidences can be there in any form solid liquid or gas if there is a strong smell of a perfume or any such thing and we are smoking on the crime scene that can again be mixed up or messed up because of the smoking so we should not do all such things on the crime scene this also comes in the production of the crime scene we have not to use the uh, the utilities uh, on the crime scene like toilets or bathrooms because there may be certain evidences washed off blood stains can be there there can be wet towels there can be used towel which may have certain dna fibers hairs other things so we are going to destroy these evidences if we are going to use the utilities on the crime scene we have not to move the dead body until and unless we have uh, recorded or documented the complete crime scene the body should only be re uh, removed after the complete documentation of the crime scene the sketching or photography of the crime scene and then we have not to touch any of the item or surface which is likely to have any latent fingerprint or hidden fingerprint impressions like again the same thing door knob or light switch because these are the areas where we will encounter most of the fingerprints now we have to avoid to remove any of the item without the specific permission of the crime scene investigator let's say if you are working as a forensic expert there so you need to have the permission the authorized permission of the investigating officer to remove any such item from the crime scene which can be proven very crucial very important otherwise in the later stages of the investigation and helping victims apprehend the suspect detaining witnesses and requesting needing assistance all these things should be done with the specific permission of the crime scene investigator or with the permission of the legal authorities and we have to make sure that we should treat the victims and the witnesses with dignity and consideration because we still do not know that who is actually the victim or who is actually the culprit who are the witnesses we do not know the victim may actually be the culprit as i told you in the last lecture or the witnesses may actually be the criminal so we should treat with them the dignity and consideration so they should not escape out they should not have any idea of your investigation so treat them with dignity and due consideration in such cases now we need to keep the suspect and the witnesses separated whenever possible because still we do not know who are the suspect who are the witnesses but we need to keep all the people around separated so they should not discuss much about the crime scene otherwise they are going to lose many of the important or significant information over there we have not to discuss anything with the uh, about the crime with the witnesses and the bystanders they may pass on the information to others and the confidentiality is the first thing of the uh, investigating officer and the forensic expert to be maintained uh, there on the crime scene and during the whole investigation till the complete investigation is over and the conviction is done we need to maintain the confidentiality so it is the rule of confidentiality uh, which we need to take and which we will discuss in the further more lecture series so we need to uh, do the planning and we need to make the notes of the crime scene as well now there are certain things which are needed to be noted on the crime scene immediately which went into the documentation of the crime scene along with the photography sketches the notes parts also there so what we are going to note first of all when we approach the crime scene so the time of the crime committed and how do you know the time of the crime committed maybe you will you were not present at the time when the crime was committed so what you need to do you need to ask the questions or interrogations from the onlookers bystanders family members of the house or the neighbors and you need to record the appropriate time of crime when you see because they may be telling lies and in the later stages of investigation during the post mortem examination it was found that their statement was wrong 
so you can catch up the criminal you can catch up the suspect you can take care of these things timely so and when uh, the first security officer was called that time has to be recorded who has called the security officer what was the weather conditions what happens uh, if if there is a if there is a too much cold climate is there then definitely the rotting of the body that uh, the decomposition of the body will be different in the areas where the hot climate is there so all these things should be noted and then we need to note about the humidity whether the wetness or any moisture is there or any type of pollution is there because if any contamination happens so we need to prove this in the court room in the letter that this was the condition of the crime scene and that is the reason why this has happened so as the temperature and the weather now when to conduct the searches uh, we are talking about the illegal search and seizures because sometimes we have the uh, we have the warrant issued from the court or from the legal authorities from the investigator so we can conduct the searches but otherwise we should not conduct the search but there are certain circumstances where we need to conduct the search immediately even without such permission so like the cases of the emergency if it is a road accident so in these cases we need to conduct the search immediately or if the victim is surviving for the life if there is a chance of life we need to conduct the search immediately we can move the person immediately with the help of the medical assistant there or if you think that the most of the evidence will be lost let's say there is a heavy rain and you think that the most of the evidence will be lost so you can carry on investigating the crime scene even in such cases with the due permission of the investigating officer because that is the requirement at that time or a search of a person or property within the immediate control uh, during a lawful arrest if if the person uh, provides you the consent uh, for search for such so thank you very much um, hope you like this uh, lecture series of the crime scene production and we will be coming again uh, with the documentation of the crime scene and